to discuss the growing threats to American national security and to the security of our friends and allies in the Middle East. Under President Obama and Vice President Biden, the policies put in place were a catastrophe for our allies in the Middle East and a boon to our enemies. They boosted the Muslim Brotherhood and criticized Arab governments that tried to crack down on religious extremists. They gave Palestinian groups tied to terrorism a veto over peace between our Israeli and Arab allies, and they elevated those groups. They pushed the catastrophic Obama-Iran nuclear deal which dismantled pressure on Iran and put the Ayatollah on a path towards a nuclear arsenal, while sending pallets of cash in the dead of night as ransom for hostages. Of course, the Obama-Biden administration didn't tell the American people and didn't tell Congress what they were doing. Instead, they deliberately hid that information. They lied as long as they could, about their policies. And they developed and built an echo chamber designed to drown out their critics. I rise today, Madam President, because history is repeating itself, because I am deeply worried that President Biden and the Biden-Harris administration are returning to the very worst policies and the very worst tactics of the Obama years and that the consequences are going to be far worse. Once again, the Biden-Harris administration is boosting the Muslim Brotherhood and other religious extremist groups in the Middle East. They're elevating the Palestinians at the expense of our Israeli and Arab allies, and they're dismantling pressure on Iran. And once again, they are hiding those details from Congress. They do not want Congress to know, and they do not want the American people to know. And in some cases, unfortunately, they are outright lying. Madam President, I know that President Biden and his administration is refusing to answer or even lying about their Middle East policies because I asked them. I asked them as part of questioning Barbara Leaf, the president's nominee to be the Assistant Secretary of State for Near East Affairs. Over the next several minutes, I'll discuss the answers I got back. Ms. Leaf has been and will continue to be at the center of the Biden-Harris administration's Middle East policy. She was responsible for Middle East policy from the very beginning of this administration as the Senior Director for Middle East and North African Affairs at the National Security Council. In her new position to which she's been nominated, she would be America's most senior diplomat for the Middle East. I asked Ms. Leaf written questions about Biden administration policies in multiple areas of Middle East policy as part of her testimony in front of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Her answers ranged from deliberately non-responsive to simply false and throughout, thoroughly, deeply distressing. For example, right now today, the Biden-Harris administration is withholding $130 million of assistance for security and counterterrorism from our Egyptian allies, allegedly on human rights concerns. What we don't know is exactly why they're doing it and exactly what the Biden-Harris administration is asking for. Under the Obama administration, the United States repeatedly, inexplicably boosted the Muslim Brotherhood, which openly advocated terrorism against the United States. Those extremists were boosted at the expense of moderate Arab allies, and they consistently misled the public about their goals. Here. The only reason the American public found out in the first place about this $130 million is because the Washington Post revealed it. The Biden-Harris administration didn't explain to the American people what they were doing. It was only the reporting of journalists 
that revealed it, and we still don't know enough. We don't know the details. The Post reported that the administration is withholding the aid until Egypt addresses certain human rights concerns. We don't know what they are. They apparently include releasing 16 unnamed prisoners. We don't know who they are. So I asked Ms. Leaf about, uh, about, Ms. Leaf about these details. I asked about the 16 people. I asked for their names, their institutional affiliations, what they were charged with. I also asked if they were American citizens. And if they were not, I asked whether they were involved in organizations that push Islamic extremism or anti-Semitism. Ms. Leaf is obviously very familiar with the, the case. She wrote back over a thousand words of highly, highly technical responses. Here's just a third of her answer. That's the part we could fit on the poster board. Lots of words, lots of numbers. But you can see not a single detail that I requested was provided. Of the 16 people the Biden-Harris administration is demanding that Egypt is released, you will see not a single name. None of them. Congress doesn't get to know who those 16 people are. The American people don't get to know who those 16 people are. The answer from Ms. Leaf to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is not to put too fine a point on it, go jump in a lake. How many of those 16 are affiliated with terrorist organizations? The answer from Ms. Leaf, go jump in a lake. How many of them are American citizens? The answer from Ms. Leaf, go jump in a lake. Why is that? Why is that that the Biden-Harris administration is extorting Egypt to release 16 prisoners, and yet they're embarrassed to say who those prisoners are? Well, we do have some public hints about the sort of people that the White House and that congressional Democrats may be trying to coerce our Egyptian allies into releasing. Buried inside a very recent Senate appropriations report, there is an instruction that seems very much like what we're seeing with these secret conditions. It came presumably from Senate Democrats, although we don't know who. No Senate Democrat has stood forward to own this language, but there is a Senate Democrat who authored this language. It says, in making the certification required by subsection A3A, the Secretary of State shall consider the cases of Ola A. Kwaradawi, Hossam Khalaf, Salah Sultan, Abdul Rahman Tariq, and Mohammed El Bakr. The committee urges that humane treatment and fair trials be afforded these and other prisoners in Europe, in Egypt, rather. So apparently, for some mysterious unnamed Senate Democrat who's unwilling to put his or her name to it, these names are people the United States should champion. And it suggests the sorts of people the Biden-Harris administration may be trying to extort Egypt into releasing. Who are they? Well, let's start with Salah Sultan. Who is Salah Sultan? He is a Muslim Brotherhood propagandist. He's a hate preacher. He is someone who goes on TV over and over again and preaches the most vicious sorts of libels against Jews. Why are Senate Democrats trying to release vicious anti-Semites? Why are they suggesting, if you go back to the appropriation language, why are they suggesting in the appropriation language that the United States should be fighting to release that anti-Semite and hate preacher? We don't know, because Senate Democrats aren't defending that position, and the administration refuses to answer. Who are some of the other people on that list? Well, you have Mohammed El Bakr. He was a Salafist youth activist. 
He was part of the revolutionary youth who started the revolution. And he's been implicated in security violations. How about Ola al Qaradawi? She is the daughter of Yosef al Qaradawi, who is one of the major voices for jihad inside the Muslim Brotherhood. The paper trail on her is deliberately opaque from both sides. How about Hossam Khalaf? He is Ola al Qaradawi's husband. And he's been allegedly connected to a Muslim Brotherhood offshoot. How about Abdul Rahman Tarek? Well, that's an unknown whose presence has not been accounted for publicly. And yet these names have mysteriously appeared in a Senate appropriations report. When I asked Ms. Leaf about it, she provided a thousand words and not a single name. And I will tell you that actually the, name, the names on that list are not secrets from Congress. They have been provided to Congress in a classified form. So, Madam President, you and I can go into a secure skiff, and we can read it in the skiff. We can read the names. You know what we're not allowed to do? Tell anyone what the names are. Why is it those names are classified? They're classified because President Biden and Vice President Harris don't want the American people to know who it is they're trying to release. There's no reasonable justification for those names to be classified. They are extorting our friend and ally, Egypt, to get 16 people released from jail, and they refuse to tell us who. The American people have a right to know if the Biden administration is trying to pressure our allies to release Muslim Brotherhood extremists, if the, if the Biden-Harris administration is trying to get our, our allies to release anti-Semites, and if they are to hear a justification for why. But Ms. Leaf instead simply defies the Senate and refuses to answer. Let's turn now to Israel.